thank you all for coming here uh, today. And uh, I hope you will stay here also uh, in the coming days, not only for the cross-migration conference, but of course also for our spring conference uh, on uh, Thursday and, uh, and Friday. Let's start with, uh, with today's uh, program. My name is uh, Peter Scholte. I'm coordinator of the MISCO Research Network and uh, uh, PI, as the name uh, is, uh, of uh, the Cross-Migration Research Project, of which we will not only present some of our outputs, but also engage in dialogues with you in different workshops later today and uh, tomorrow. So it's really not our intention to just throw on the table what we have found and then, uh, well, just to show off how nice all of that is. No, it's really our intention to uh, engage in a dialogue with you about what that means, uh, what did we miss, what should we do more uh, in the future in other research projects, uh, but also as a MISCO research network. Uh, so let me uh, kick off um, uh, the first part uh, of this conference on the coming of age of uh, migration uh, studies. Um, actually, the occasion of this conference is that IMISCO is now still celebrating its 15th anniversary. Uh, we'll soon turn 16, uh, but we are still 15 years uh, old. Uh, and this was a great moment for us to reflect on the development of migration studies. So IMISCO now is the largest remaining academic network in our, in our fields. And that brings a strong responsibility that we feel we should do much more with than we've done before. So this is a, was a great occasion for us to reflect on uh, the development of our field as an interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary research uh, field and to reflect on the role that we as scholars and that we as a MISCO community can play in that in particular. There will be a special issue dedicated to this topic also, published by Comparative Migration Studies, will be published, uh, at least we hope, uh, before uh, the annual conference of, uh, of IMISCO. And um, the presentations that will come later today are based on a lead article in this um, uh, special issue. And the round table um, will consist of panelists who have written comments, commentaries, based on the lead article, a lead analysis of the development of migration studies. So, um, what we'll do today, and also the outcomes of today, um, will feed into this special issue. And you'll get a sort of a sneak preview of this publication uh, later uh, this year. And this special issue will be guest edited with Nathan Levy in Asia, Pizarevskaya, who you will hear later today as well. Then, a little bit back to basis. So, um, what is going on? So, if you, if you look at the development of the field of migration studies, you see rapid growth, uh, rapid growth, uh, expensive growth even. You can see that also in the EMISCO research network. The number of member institutes in the research network is expanding uh, rapidly. And as of um, tomorrow, after our board of directors meeting, uh, I anticipate that we have 54 member institutes. Uh, that's not just in MISCO, that's also because the field out there is getting bigger. Uh, you could even argue that the field of migration studies is growing faster than IMISCO is. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's questionable how you can interpret this, uh, this, uh, this data. This is a reflection of this immense growth of this field of migration studies. Uh, at an earlier conference last week, I also compared these figures with a plague. Uh, we as migration scholars, we grow as a plague in the number of authors involved in the field, um, the number of items in our research portal that we talk about uh, later, uh, the number of organizations publishing on migration and diversity, and also, which is a very good sign, I think, the number of countries involved in migration studies. Uh, so really a rapid development of the field as a reflection of academic maturity, as a reflection of urgency. That's a question for later today, how to interpret this growth of uh, the field. Another one that I like very much, also coming from a publication written by, by Nathan and, and Asia, is this uh, increase of number of journal articles, uh, of, of journals specialized in, in migration. Uh, here you can see that almost every year we still have additions of new journals who are publishing more, uh, 
uh, and accelerating this growth in, in migration studies. So, so a very serious growth. Um, but this growth, what does, that, what, what does it actually uh, mean, this growth? I mean, it's not a problem that there is not enough research or knowledge out there. Uh, that is clearly not the problem. Uh, what may be the problem is that this research not always finds its way to potential users of the knowledge. Or the other way around, that users can't find their way to research. Eh? Of course, it comes from uh, both uh, directions. So this is also a mission for, uh, for IMISCO and for the research projects that I'll talk about uh, in, uh, in a minute. Another one is, of course, fighting the ghost of knowledge relativism. And I think that especially in our area, this has, be has been very, very powerfully uh, present, uh, unfortunately, eh, in terms of alternative facts, fact-free politics. So what should we do as academics to help fight this ghost of knowledge relativism? That is a, cha a challenge. That's not enough that there is just more knowledge out there. Uh, that is not enough. We should also make sure that that knowledge finds its way into the debate on uh, migration and diversity. And also, quantity is not everything. Uh, so does this quantity, this, this growth of migration studies, does it also translate itself in theory building in the field of migration studies? And how can we promote that we build on each other's work? Uh, how can we promote systematic knowledge accumulation? Uh, so there are two projects that will be showcased in these two uh, days. And the morning program is primarily uh, dedicated, or the, the afternoon program, sorry, uh, is primarily dedicated to the cross-migration project. And this was one of the few projects which have been submitted as IMISCO. Yeah, so formally there had to be a couple of lead uh, partners, uh, uh, but this was the first time that they misco, first time in years that they misco decide, okay, we go for this together as a network. And the aims of cross-migration was to systematically map migration research. So what is actually out there in terms of knowledge production, uh, by whom, in which countries, on what paradigms, uh, so, so how is migration research developing, evolving? Promoting key knowledge questions. So what are key knowledge questions that we as academics, but also policymakers, think should be addressed more in the future? So where are the gaps? Are we all addressing the questions? Are we all addressing the same questions? Or are there certain questions that are addressed far too little? And how can we then promote that we target more research at those questions? And how can we promote more systematic knowledge accumulation around other questions on which we have more research projects. So, promoting systematic knowledge accumulation, I already uh, mentioned, and the other one is making migration research more accessible. So it's now a huge research field. So back in 2004, the best thing you could do if you wanted to know something about migration research, you go to an IMISCO conference organized by Rina Spennings, also present here today. But then the network was not so big. So it was quite easy, can I say that, to get an oversight of people working on migration. Nowadays, that is incredibly hard. So how can we then fight the ghost of knowledge relativism if it's very hard for potential knowledge users to find our knowledge? So that's also one of the aims of the cross-migration research project. Uh, then there will be other workshops uh, in uh, this uh, conference and there will be a concluding plenary focused on the RESOMA project, uh, an Horizon 2020 project. Uh, uh, led uh, by ISMU, Milan, uh, MPG, and a couple of other partners, including my own uh, university, um, with a strong involvement of IMISCO partners as input. RESOMA is a research social platform on migration and asylum. And uh, the aims of RESOMA are not so much to promote uh, well, a systematic mapping of migration studies, but to create an infrastructure to create, promote interaction between knowledge producers, stakeholders, and policymakers, and also to, create, also to create a sustainable platform, a sustainable digital platform uh, on which that interaction can take place. So it's not just about knowledge production, it's also about how to organize science society dialogues and how to create an infrastructure for that. Uh, so these two projects, will be the basis of a lot of work uh, today and uh, tomorrow. 
So in the cross-migration projects, we were not by ourselves. This is a huge list of our partners, mostly EMISCO member institutes, with uh, a couple of extra member, uh, a couple of extra partners in places where we felt it was necessary for a good implementation of the project. I will not dwell too long uh, about uh, this. The structure of cross-migration, the structure of how we try to promote systematic knowledge accumulation is very much based on what I already mentioned, a number, a number of key knowledge questions. And you'll recognize these key knowledge questions also in workshops that we have today and tomorrow, which are addressing some of the specific questions. First of all, we accumulated knowledge around Migration drivers, why do people migrate? Migration infrastructures, how do people migrate? And migration forms, so what types of migration can we actually uh, distinguish? Another key knowledge question, another key topic around which we accumulate knowledge is policies. So what do we know about policy models, policy effects? Um, and what do we know about how that interacts with migration drivers, flows and with infrastructures? Um, and we didn't stop there. We also, cl working closely together with, uh, with MPG and IOM, we also explored how we can develop this knowledge into a more systematic approach towards defining migration scenarios, setting migration indicators and defining migration scenarios. And those are also key topics later uh, in workshops. I don't remember whether that's today or tomorrow, but we have a workshop on indicators and on uh, scenarios. Uh, the last thing that we did in cross-migration was also um, uh, giving an advice to uh, the European Union uh, about how to frame the future strategic research agenda on migration. So if we take stock of migration studies, if we take stock of what we know, but also of what we don't know and what we should know, what type of advice could we then give to Brussels on how to enhance future funding streams for migration studies. So. Then a key thing um, on which there will be the following presentation is um, our migration research hub. And so I said in the beginning that there was, an, there was a lack of a systematic research infrastructure for migration studies. We created that uh, in the cross-migration project. It's called the Migration Research Hub. It's already up and running uh, on migrationresearch.com. Go there, check whether your publications are there, whether your expert profile uh, is there, because it's, it's very, uh, very important. And we really hope that this in the future will become a sort of a crossroads between a Google Scholar and a research gate, but then specifically for migration studies. And it will make it a lot easier for you, policymakers, journalists, to get access to, uh, to research. Um, I will not dwindle too much about uh, here, but on migrationresearch.com, you'll also find a couple of other products of us, knowledge accumulation reports, so our efforts to systematically bring together knowledge on migration drivers, on migration infrastructures. And we're trying to develop that into a new interactive textbook so that all the future students in migration studies, open access for free, online, can get access to state-of-the-art uh, chapters, state-of-the-art texts, all migration drivers, all migration forums, all migration infrastructures, uh, and that will be systematically connected to our migrationresearch.com portal. So, a different, a new type of textbook that we are uh, developing. Uh, you can expect it around, well, let me be safe, early 21, uh, I think, about that uh, time. Um, in the future, so before I, I hand over uh, to the next uh, speakers, in the future, what can you expect from us? Well, the name cross-migration will vanish. Cross-migration has been taken over by EMISCO. So uh, it's not a cross-migration not a cross-migration research hub, it's the EMISCO migration research hub uh, as of now. We try to develop it further. EMISCO will try to develop it uh, further. The portal now already has more than 90,000 articles and books and more than two and a half thousand projects and around 400 expert profiles. And we're only just getting started, so I'm very optimistic uh, uh, there. It's being integrated into EMISCO and we are bringing together the Rezoma 
uh, outputs, the Rhizoma infrastructure, and trying to integrate that also with Imisco's web infrastructure and to see whether we can bring this digital platform for interaction between knowledge producers, stakeholders, policymakers, to build that into, to develop that into a feature on our, uh, on our web uh, page. Uh,